All right, hey, it's Karen, and I am here with Noah Rosenblatt from Urban Digs. Thank Hello. you for joining me. Anytime. And today we just wanted to give you a quick market recap of the 2019 market. So Noah, what would you say are the top two key takeaways of 2019? <sighs> two takeaways, um, 2019, by far was a policy driven reset, right? So policy driven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ex I mean, I mean, there's no other way to really, that's, that's the by far number one. Like number two is actually a distant kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of policies that changed and the market really did um, kind of um, adjust in the 2009 period to, we've kind of normalized. So I think we've gotten down to that point where we reset and 2019 was that reset. And again, it was a policy driven thing. You had the rent regulations and multifamily, mm -hmm. you got the um, salt deductions, you got the mansion tax that hit mid year and mm -hmm. really messed up the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and you got capital controls out of China that's limiting money coming in here. You got a strong US dollar. So there's a lot of policy things that are causing buyers to just pause and sellers to be like, all right, what the hell's going on here? Mm -hmm. Do you think this is an opportunity market? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm a contrarian, right? So, I mean, I've been talking publicly about the fact that I like this market for the last eight months or so. And I mean, if we, if I had to say how much are we down over the last eight months, um, we're probably down 2%, 3%, something like that. So like, I'm not I'm not right in the sense the market's going up. If you're trying to buy now and, and, and profit in eight months, you know, you're not day trading this market. Um, but look, we're kind of bouncing on the bottom over here and the hit already happened. We're down. This has been a four year downturn. Right. And if there's some green shoots I could talk about, um, in the last quarter or so, the last three, four months, um, there are more deals happening. Contract activity is starting to tick up a little bit. Yeah. Um, the luxury sector and the new developments are still kind of not really seeing that. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some green shoots in terms of um, demand and we're going into the active season in 2020. Yeah. And listen, a lot of sellers who were aspirational in 2019 mm -hmm. found out the hard way that they're not gonna get their deals and they started to come down in price in the last quarter. This is what I'm hearing anecdotally from a lot of brokers. Okay. So I think a lot of the deals that were put into contract in the last three, four months are not necessarily new people listing, right. but they're those older sellers, aspirational mm -hmm. sellers that over time have reduced their price and they finally said, you know what, I give up, I'm throwing in the towel, I need to sell this place, let's move down. Mm -hmm. And the buyers have come in. So that tells me it's a transactional marketplace. Mm -hmm. You have to find the right price. Right, yep, always about the price. That's right. And what do you think will happen this year with the economy, with, po with politics? Right. Um, I mean, the economy is just doing its thing. It's going crazy. The stock market is doing <laughs> its thing. It's a little bubblicious, but who the hell knows when, when that's going to stop. Right. I mean, look, we're in like a kind of um, engineered world right now with rates Good the way. way they are and <laughs> stock markets kind of being juiced. That goes on until it doesn't go on anymore. I have mm -hmm. no idea when that stops. Yeah. But it's an election year, and again, there was a lot of policies that happened that were that were tenant friendly, um, not investor friendly in New York City. Mm -hmm. I don't think this market's going anywhere. I mm -hmm. think we reset to a new place. I mm -hmm. think the hit already happened. Um, I think you're buying in a market now where it just kind of will stagnate. Um, if we drop three, four percent, that won't surprise me. If we rise three, four percent, that won't surprise me. But that's mm -hmm. kind of like bumbling along the bottom mm -hmm. until, until policy changes, until we get some more clarity on the election and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't see a new uptrend starting just yet. But I will give you comfort if you're buying that the, the everything I'm talking about, all those policy changes and all the decline of Manhattan real estate, is all priced in already. So, so the prices that you're seeing out right now should really reflect a different market than 2015. That's a good point. Yeah. It's already priced in. However, they have had to adjust with like how long things stay, how long things stay on the market because they saw those stats from Q3 and they're like, oh, the market's getting better. But yeah. they, you really had to kind of let that pass. And now yeah. that we're in early January, like we're seeing hopefully the Q4 And that stats. was the mansion tax. The mansion tax had a huge bump in year over year prices and sellers yeah. kind of thought <laughs> fakely, like it wasn't yeah. real, mm -hmm. that this market's getting better. And at the end of the day, it was just a bunch of people trying to rush to close before a July 1st deadline. Yeah. To, to avoid those mansion tax policy yeah. increases and save 20, 30, 40, 50, yeah. which is a lot of money. It is. You know? So it took demand from future quarters and that's why you saw that big pop and it confused right. a lot of people. Yeah, it was artificial. It was artificial. What yeah. is the hot property, hot neighborhood, where are the opportunities? Sure, I'll tell you a couple of hot neighborhoods. Um, Upper Manhattan and Upper West Side are two neighborhoods that are mm -hmm. really doing quite well. Mm -hmm. East Village um, seems to be kind of isolated a little bit. Mm -hmm. In general, the um, two million and under market, the lower price points have been somewhat isolated from this slowdown. Mm -hmm. This has been a price point specific um, decline mm -hmm. over four or five years. Yeah. So like the, the, if you're thinking contrarian, like where's the value? 
Um, the, the sectors that got hit the most is the luxury sector and the new development sector. Mm -hmm. I think there are deals to be had in new developments. Now those developers are not advertising those deals, mm -hmm. so you really have to have a smart broker representing you if you're buying that understands how to negotiate with yes. these developers. But these developers will give out not only discounts, but concessions and that could equal 15 to 20 percent or more in some cases. Yeah. So I mean, again, the, the luxury market is down anywhere between 20 and 40 percent. I mean, some some 30 million dollar price super luxury is down a lot. You know. But are they down because they were priced right, or is it like wish thinking? And then here's where they should be. Well, but then it's 30, 40. I'm just there. talking relatives at a peak, right? So okay. so where transactions were occurring in 2014, 2015, and where mm -hmm. transactions are occurring now. Um, if you were one of those people luxury, lucky enough to buy a 20, 30, 40 million dollar place, mm -hmm. um, it's probably down 20, 30 percent <laughs> from that time because everything's changed, yeah. right? The whole international market's changed. You can't hide under LLCs anymore. Mm -hmm. Capital controls it, and Asian markets aren't coming in here. Mm -hmm. Currency trends are against us, so those markets aren't coming in here. Plus, the multifamily market, the policy change for rent regulations, yeah. that money's not getting in there. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, if you look at it, there, there's these developers, they have a pipeline problem, right? Yeah. Jonathan Miller was mentioning there's 9,000 or 8,000 plus units in the pipeline over the next year this or two. Too much. There's there's a there's an inventory problem in that yeah. sector. So how are they trading? Buyers know what's going on. Buyers are bidding mm -hmm. here. They're asking here, and you got to mm -hmm. bridge that gap. And usually the developers coming down to where those bids yeah. are. So value play. So let's say you've got somebody relocating from outside the city, and they're looking at the global stats, mm -hmm. right? And then they're like, oh, but New York. Which, which globally, or at least nationwide, we're seeing a shortage of inventory. Yeah. Here we have like the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we've seen, like buyers, I'm working with lots of them, who are just like, I'm just gonna keep waiting, 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 finally putting in a bid 10, you know, 10% under the final, you know, strike yeah. price. Regardless of its price, right? Right, right. exactly. Just yeah. like, let's test it out. Yeah. Like, what would you say? To them. <laughs> Get a good broker? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, listen, the, the New York City markets operate in their own way. The, what is going on here is very different than nationwide. I'm sure mm -hmm. it's very different than global markets. I don't really know what's happening with other global markets. I don't think they're up. I think, mm -hmm. if anything, they've kind of been down and yeah. they've been going down for the last four or five years. I think a lot of markets are starting to, uh, vertical markets like mm -hmm. London, mm -hmm. um, Dubai, I think they're starting to bottom a little bit or at least yeah. try to find a bottom yeah. um, after this downfall that they have. But for New York City real estate, look, it is, it is a maze out there mm -hmm. navigating this market. You gotta, look, if you're gonna take advantage and you're a bidder or, or a renter and you're gonna take advantage of what's going on, you need a broker that actually knows what's yeah. happening because every single building at, operates in its own way, yeah. every neighborhood operates in its own way, and at the end of the day, if you're buying a one-bedroom apartment in a co-op market in the Upper West Side, mm -hmm. it's very di different than buying a one-bedroom in financial district, yeah. so that market might be totally different than the Upper West Side market, yeah. which happens to be a very hot market right now. Right. So that's my point right here. It's all segmented mm -hmm. and fragmented, and the agent needs to know how to yeah. consult properly. Whew. It's a no lot pressure. Of stuff. No yeah. pressure. No pressure at all. All right. Well, thank you so much. This was your 2019 market recap. And again, this is Noah Rosenblatt, and we will come at you shortly with more stats. Happy New Year. Bye.